In his talk on October 6, 1946, President George Albert Smith gives us an insight in his childhood, his first prayer, and other experiences. I'm standing here today not more than about 300 yards from the very spot where I first breathed the breath of life. Just across the street in the little house, little humble home, little adobe house, four or five rooms in it, surrounded by a little garden and orchard. That's where I began. Salt Lake City at that time was a village. We didn't have any water pipes at that time. All our water for our houses was picked up in buckets and barrels the side of the ditches that ran down our streets. And then it was carried to the house in smaller receptacles. We didn't have any electric lights in those days. We had the tallow candle, or we had some uh, kerosene oil lamps, but we didn't have the electric lights. The gas did come a little later while I was a child. We didn't have a foot of pavement in the city that we live in here. Not one foot, either on the road or on the sidewalk when I was a child. I can remember this great wide road just to the west of us here used to be about six inches of dust on it in the summertime. The finest dust that you could ever put your feet into, and that's the way we used to play, barefooted. <laughs> Run up and down the street playing ball. We didn't have to dodge the automobiles. Nobody had ever dreamed of an automobile at that time, I think. At any rate, it was a long time after that before the first one came here. And then that was a curiosity. But I'm thinking of what's happened since. This house was built at that time when I was a child. The temple was begun before that time. And when it was built, I still lived across the street. But during the time that has elapsed since my birth and now, I've traveled in many parts of the world. And I've found our fathers, other children, men and women of various creeds and nationalities, and my, what occasion I have this day to be grateful for the kindness they have extended to me. It isn't difficult for me to love my fellow men because I have known so much kindness from them wherever I have been. Of course, I have found occasionally individuals that haven't grown up yet. They may never grow up. I don't know. They had bitterness in their heart for their fellows and jealousy and suspicion and hatred. But that wasn't the kind of a training that I had. I was trained at the knee of a Latter-day Saint mother. One of the first things I ever knew was when she took me by the hand and led me up by this time we moved, we moved into another house where there were two stories. She led me by the hand upstairs. And there in the, in the upper room there were two beds, the bed in which my parents slept and a little trundle bed over on the other side. As she helped me up the stairs, my, I can remember it as if it were yesterday, took me by the hand and helped me up. And when we got up by the upstairs, she sat down by my little trundle bed. She had me kneel in front of her. She folded my hands and took my hands in hers and taught me my first prayer. I'll never forget it. I don't want to forget it. It's one of the loveliest memories that I have in life. An angel mother sitting down by my bedside and teaching me to pray. It was such a little simple prayer. But I can repeat it today while it's a long time ago. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. That was my first prayer. But that prayer opened for me the windows of heaven. That prayer extended to me the hand of my Father in heaven. For she had explained to me what it all meant as far as a little child could understand. And from that day until now, while I have covered approximately a million miles in the world among our father's other children. Every day and every night, wherever I have been, when I have gone to my bed or arisen from it, I have felt 
I was close to my heavenly father. It isn't so far away. And the other children, my mother gave birth to 11 children. 11 husky boys, 11 husky boys and girls, three of them girls. And when I think of the anxiety that we gave that mother, and then realize it was the gospel of Jesus Christ that prompted her to bring us into the world, she wanted to do what God had commanded our first parents to do, to multiply and replenish the earth. And so, as long as she lived upon the earth, I had a heavenly father. I had an earthly father. Most of the time she lived. And I had a, an angel mother, for she was an angel, as we understand angels these days to be. And I stand here today after the experiences of a long ex life of travel and association with our father's other children. And I realize that she was only one of the daughters of my heavenly father, and he loves them all. And they, just like the men, had that training given to them when they were children, that we believe in God, the eternal Father, and in his Son, Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Ghost. That was the training of the children of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and, of course, of many other churches. But I'm thinking of what your privileges have been. Many of you who are in this house came from foreign lands, came from sections of the world, where there were not the comforts that you have here and left what little comfort you had to pioneer the wilderness, travel the desert and the plains and come here in the tops of these everlasting hills to the head of the church where the church was established in that day and began digging in and what has been the result. When you started, you had found out that the Lord had promised this, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things will be added. That's what brought your parents and mine, your grandparents and mine from other lands and from other parts of this country. And they came because they felt that they held their father's hand. And many of them had a hard time when they came. Not very much food, not much clothing, poor accommodations as far as homes were concerned, but they held their heavenly Father's hand. And morning and evening they bowed in thanksgiving and prayer to him who is the giver of all and taught us who have followed after to so adjust ourselves that we can be happy by being filled with the love of God and the love of our fellows in the world. I want to tell you, we have used to have here a number of years ago a young man who came from Wales he didn't have the opportunity of a college education, but he was a Welshman full of Welsh music. And when he came here, he became the leader of this great choir. He it was who had joy, along with those who preceded him and those who have followed, building a choir to sing, not just to sing, but to sing praises to our Heavenly Father. I want to tell you a little instant about Evan Stevens. People were coming here some very prominent people were coming here. And that day, we didn't have so many come of prominence. We were too far out in the wilderness. And one of our good bishops came to Evan Stevens and said, Brother Stevens, I have some company coming next Sunday to the religious meeting. We used to have a meeting here at 2 o'clock every Sunday. And uh, I hope you're going to have some good music. Brother Stevens said, All right, Bishop, we'll have good music. Well, the bishop didn't think that was enough assurance, so he pressed it a little. He said, now, these people are not, ordin not ordinary people. These people are men of affairs and, and uh, have wealth, he says. Their families are wealthy, and they're coming here, and I'd like them to just see what a fine choir we have here. Now, won't you give us something just a little extra? Well, Brother Stephen said, I'll tell you, bishop, we've already had our practice. The music has all been prepared. I don't see how we can make a change. I think it'll be good enough for your friends. And then the bishop pressed him a little harder. And then his Welsh got up. And he said, now look at here, bishop. We've prepared the music for our next Sunday to sing to the Lord. And I guess if it's good enough for the Lord, it's good enough for your company. 